Hi everyone, my name is Kat, Art of Free Librarian, and welcome to a new video. Today I will be sharing my top 10 reads of 2023. Um, I won't do honorable mentions, it'll be just the top 10, but I do consider, if I've read multiple books in one series, I do consider them as one entity, so multiple books in the same series will be sharing a spot um on here um so yeah let's get into it um on number 10 i have the bone chart daughter and the bone chart war by andrea stewart these are the first two books in the drowning empires trilogy um i really enjoyed this um it is about it's a few different perspectives but the two main ones are lynn and jovis and lynn um is the daughter of the emperor um and the emperor is the only person who is able to use the magic um but he won't teach it to her because lynn has lost his memory and first she needs to get her memory back for a father wants to teach her the magic um so she tries to get that back jovis is a smuggler who doesn't want to be a good person but he is um and he saves children from tithing because the magic um is that they give a little bone shard that every person in this empire has to give and then they can be used to power these constructs to do all sorts of tasks but if your shard is used it drains the life out of you um so jovis starts to save children and then gets involved in things um i really liked it i thought the magic was very interesting um like it was very intriguing we didn't really know what was going on um a lot of the time and so we had this mystery going on that we're trying to um figure out what was happening um it was very compulsively readable i overall i really enjoyed it um there are some very interesting perspectives outside of this too as well um that i won't go into because i don't want to spoil anything but um yeah, I really liked it, and I'm really looking forward to reading the third book this year. Then on number nine, I have Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. This is a historical fiction um, set in somewhere in the medieval period, um, and it is basically about um, a group of people who are building a cathedral and the influence that the political landscape at the time has on the building of this cathedral, but also the other way around, how this cathedral influences um, the politics that are going on. Um, this was so, so good. Um, whenever I was reading this, time was just not a thing. I. I'm usually not a person who can sit there for like hours on end and just read, um, but with the Pillars of the Earth, I could do that. It was so well written. Um, the character work was also great. There was one POV character who was just despicable, and every page I spent in his POV, I wanted to go take a shower. Um, so it was really well done. Um, content warning there is a um on page sexual assault um but it does it is handled well i think and it does um have a purpose in the story it's not just look how bad this person is um so it was really it was really good i really loved it i buddy read this book with reading an info um a link her channel down below um and we both really really enjoyed this we had a great time um so 
yeah now to find time for the rest of the series <laughs> then on number eight I have No Escape by Nuri Turkel. This is a nonfiction about, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce this word anymore because I've, I've heard it pronounced in so many ways and I'm not sure what the right one was. Um, Weiger, Weiger. I'm not sure what the correct pronunciation is at this point, um, but it's people in um, China who are very oppressed. Um, it's a genocide, um, and this is a nonfiction about that. It is very, very hard to read. I did a standalone video about this, so I'll link that somewhere. Um, but yeah, it was very good. Um, I didn't, one thing that I don't really like is when sort of have like general nonfiction and memoir mix into one. Um, I'm generally not a memoir person, so, um, I'd rather just have the nonfiction. So that was a thing that I didn't love. That's very personal to me. Um, I know that that sort of mixture of two things is quite popular. Sorry, your mileage may vary, um, but that was like the only thing and it was not, like the memoir part was only like one chapter, um, so it didn't bother me. But yeah, I really, I really, enjoyed is not the right word because it's not a book that you enjoy, but it, it was very impactful, uh, very important as well, and so I, I, I do recommend um, but like all the content warnings for this book. Then on number seven, I have The Garden Gnome by Jeff McIntyre. I also have a standalone video about this one, so I'll also link that. Um, this is the first book in a indie fantasy series. It's actually the first indie fantasy that I've ever read. Um, and it's just, every time I think of this book, I just get so happy and I start smiling and it's, it's such a delightful book. Um, it is, um, about sort of the return of magic. And then we have two sides where some people think that is great and, and it's something that we need to, to welcome. And then there are others who think it's not a good thing and, and we need to try and prevent it. Um, and so those two, um, bump heads. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I really loved it. Um, it's a contemporary fantasy, um, which is not something that I read a ton of, um, but I enjoyed this, um, yeah, and there's a and there's and there's a garden gnome. We need more we need more gnomes in 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 our fantasy, um, and also just look at the cover. It's it's adorable. Um, there are some darker things that do happen in this book, but the overall tone um, stays fairly light and delightful, and I love it. And Jeff, if you're watching this, get off YouTube and continue writing the second book because I needed the second. Okay. The Garden Gnome. Then on number six, I have Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail by Ashley Herring Blake. This is a contemporary romance. Um, it's actually the second book in a series. I haven't read the, uh, the any of the other books in a series. I just started with book two. Um, but romance series tend to be companions, so you can read them out of order if you want. Um, but I really like this. We have um, Astrid Parker, who um, oh man, what was the premise of this? There was something with the TV show and home renovation, but I'm not sure if Astrid 
was like part of the film crew or if she was just or like she had something to do with the house that they were renovating i'm not sure one of the two and then you had the love interest whose name i forgot <laughs> um she worked on the renovation no i believe no 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 because the the love interest was i believe with this film crew to do the renovation was it why don't i know this oh no 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 i do remember i do remember i do remember so the love interest whose name i forgot um she the, the house belonged to her grandmother and astrid parker was like the design person architect who did the design of the house and they bumped heads a lot because they wanted different things um with the house um and astrid wanted it to be like more modern and more whatever the love interests um wanted to keep the, sh the charm also um she wanted to do some like interior design stuff um and so um they were like a rivalry so it's rivals to lovers um it was very steamy oh my god there's one scene hmm. Hmm. um but yeah, i really enjoyed it i really related to astrid parker she's very like perfectionist and it needs to be done right and high expectations um and we get to see why she is that way and i just it was very beautiful this book made me cry twice which just, this is the only book i read this year that made me cry i think i didn't that doesn't happen a lot um in movies all the time but books is very rare so this is it was really good i highly recommend i um got the first book for my birthday so i own it um and so i'm really excited to read it because i've heard that the first book is better than the second book and if i like the second book this much then i the first book must be amazing then on number five i have another nonfiction, and that is the power of a woman by the nimu kwege um this is by a congolese doctor who um, runs a hospital in congo um, that specializes in um cases of violence against women sexual violence um because there is a war in the area and sort of sexual violence against women is used as a battle tactic um and so um they're like the real victims of the war um there which is something that we see um, in many wars um, but is often not talked about um, and so he wants to shed light onto it. Um, I think he's a Nobel Peace Prize winner, but I'm not sure enough. Don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, he's, he's very known worldwide for speaking up um, for women's rights and, and being a like a feminist and i really like in the introduction he says that he often gets like the reaction of like yeah you're a man why are you doing this why don't you um like why is there a woman sitting in your chair and, and he's like yeah i would love i would love for a woman to be here but it's just the reality that um in congo that that's just not possible or for the region of congo that he lives in that is just not possible so he's like either it would be me or this chair would be empty um the second it's a possibility that there's a woman in here, there would be. Um, so I really appreciated that. Um, I appreciate it. Um, he has some... Um, 
he like does a lot of statistics where he compares statistics in Congo with statistics in other countries and also Western countries and it's also um, well, primarily with the United States and it also like it shows of like hey you think in the United States that you're doing such a great job or in Europe that you do such a great job but you know you're, you're not doing as good with a lot of these issues you think you do and I really um, appreciated that. I learned a lot about a lot of stuff um, about African history, about the United States, about things. There were a lot of times where something was mentioned and he went pretty into depth and I was like, oh yeah, I, like, I knew like that vaguely. So for example, he would mention a name and was like, oh yeah, I heard about this name and um, like, I know, like, one thing about him, but I don't really know enough about them or, like, a certain event. Um, and I, I liked, it was not super in-depth, but it was definitely more than I knew. Um, so I liked that, too. And then just, I mean, the stories of, of all these women, of course, were the, the, the important part um, of this book. They were really impactful. Um, once again, a lot of trigger warnings for this, but it was really beautiful um, and really heartbreaking and just, yeah, I highly recommend. It's a very important book. Um, and I think this is something that we definitely need to be aware of. So then on number four, I have Medusa by Jesse Burton. This is a novella um, that is a Greek myth retelling. The myth of Medusa, as the title um, suggests. Um, I had been struggling a lot with Greek myth retellings. Um, they were like never... Some of them were fine, but I never really loved them. And some of them I like really didn't like. Um, and so I like almost given up. Um, but then I was visiting a friend and as one does, I went to go look at her bookshelves because she's a reader too. And she had Medusa on her shelf and she had read it and she said, hey, I think you would really like that. Um, borrow it and read it. And I was like, no, I, no, I don't need to. And she's like, borrow it and read it. And so she kind of forced me to. And I'm very grateful for that uh, because I ended up loving it. I really liked the angle that Jesse Burton took here. I like what she changed about the myth because that is another thing with Greek myth retellings. Usually like, they just tell the exact same story, maybe from a different POV, but they don't really do anything with it. And this was still very recognizably the story. This was not um, like a massive changes. It was still set in ancient Greece, still, um, you know, like a lot of things were the same. Um, but it, there were like important plot things that did, that she did alter. Um, and so I thought that hit a nice balance um, there. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. Um, I really felt for Medusa. It was, I, I just wanted her to be happy. It was great. I loved it. I need to read more by Jesse Burton. I don't know why I haven't yet. Um, so yeah, also fun fact about Medusa, this was like the only book I read in July, and I already said it's a novella, so July was not... I didn't read much in July. <laughs> then, on place three, I have the Virgin River series by Robin Carver, the first four books, um, to be precise, because that's... I only read the first four so far. Um, regulars on the channel should not be surprised to see this series on here. I um, 
read the first book in January and I was really surprised because I, I expected like a fun palette cleanser type thingy um but I didn't expect to really love it but I did it was so good um and so I read book two and book two was even better and I don't know how and then book three was also great book four was my least favorite in the series so far but I still I give it four stars um the rest I give all five stars um but I still really enjoyed it this is a series of contemporary like women's fiction -y stories set in a town called the Virgin River um and so we always have like a main couple that we follow in each of the books um, but there is a lot of other stuff going on as well and like plot lines from earlier books um, continue so I would recommend reading these in in, in the right order um, there is always like a, an important topic um, being handled so I do have like they do have trigger warnings um, like the first book um there we have mel and she ends up in the river after her husband um has died in a, a shooting in la um then the second one deals a lot with domestic um domestic abuse the third one with sexual abuse um the fourth one deals heavily with like PTSD um that like they sort of have a sprinkling of PTSD in all of them because um one thing that connects them all is that they um, are all um in the army together in like the same um division um the, the male love interests I mean um so that's sort of what connects them um and like this town but um yeah it's just it just feels really cozy which might be weird after i listed what these books are about um but it's just tough things happen but these characters are just so loving and patient and supportive and um yeah that's just so beautiful to see that within this town people are there for each other and people are just supporting each other and it just creates this really cozy and feel-good environment even if dark stuff is happening in the book and if dark stuff has happened in people's pasts they can find this place um to heal um and i think that that is a very important um element of this year just finding a community where you're welcomed where you are loved and supported and where you can heal um and so yeah it's just it's really beautiful and i love it um book four is definitely more a romance than a contemporary book um it's a it's called the virgin river christmas i have the christmas special um they have multiple spread throughout the series um or at this one at christmas i think was like the last book that i finished in 2023 um was the first book in this series and as i said i didn't like it as much as the ones before just because it was so focused on the couple and i do prefer if there's other stuff going on um so yeah the first three are definitely contemporaries the fourth is more like a romance um but yeah i'm excited about book five because i think that that will definitely be again like the first three i just think that it's like a christmasy thing that didn't have as much to do with the rest of the series because it's a christmas special and so you this way you're able to read it in isolation and have a well-rounded stories without having all these other threads um they're also interwoven um, but I highly recommend the series. I plan to read the next four books um, in 2024. Um, so up until the next Christmas special. Uh, and I'm really excited because they're great and I love them. 
Then on number two, I have A Cress and Winter by Marissa Meyer. This is the third and fourth book in the Lunar Chronicles series. They're the um, final two in like the main series, but there is like a prequel novella and then there are short stories set afterwards. I did read the novella and the short stories that East this year, but I decided not to include them because I... <laughs> I don't like them as much as the original series. The original series is definitely a favorite. Um, the novella was was good, but not in the top 10. The short stories were a very mixed bag. Um, but Chris and Winter were lovely. I already really liked Cinder and Scarlet, which I read in 2022. Those are the first two books. Um, and you know i enjoyed those i had fun with them but um definitely crescent winter are my two favorite books in the series and this may be potentially what inspired the rule that i'm going to put two books in the same series in one spot because i wouldn't be able to pick one over the other um because i love them so much also like the characters of crescent winter are just protect them at all cost. I just realized a light earlier. I said with Astrid Parker that that was the only book that made me cry, but Winter made me cry as well. So there's two. Uh, <laughs> which is still not a lot. I'm not, a, I'm not a, I don't cry a lot. Um, but I really like it. I love Caress. She's sort of, it's never mentioned in the book, but I feel that she's sort of like neurodivergent coded. Um, which I really like because I have autism and so I really liked to see that. I love Thorn, um, who's also a character in this series. He's, he's like a type of character that I really really like, sort of like this cocky, arrogant, very handsome, can get out every girl he wants and he knows it type of guy, but he actually is like really sweet deep down and I that's a that's a character type I love like he can't take anything serious until he has to and it's just, oh, I love I love Thorn I love him so much I love Cress I love Winter as well they're just they've they've been through so much and I just want to protect them and hug them and I want them to be okay. Um, so yeah, that is Cress and Winter. And then a final book on this list is Unsealy by Ivalith Passman, which is a YA fantasy. It's the first book in a duology. The second book was supposed to come out in 2024, but it got pushed to 2025, and I'm a little sad. Um, because I love this and I want the sequel. Um, this is about um, two twins. Um, one of them is human and one of them is a changeling. And so they're actually just like a changeling and then the human child that got abducted. And then the changeling got in their place, but their mom was like, uh, I'm gonna get my child back. So she went to like the fairy realm and she like, I want my child back. And then the fairies were like, okay, you can choose which child you want. It's like, I'm not choosing, I'm taking them both. And so they're twins, <laughs> uh, which just, the mother is not really in the book, but I like that sort of background story. Um, but this is like, it's a quest story. Um, it starts with, um, them like trying to pull off this heist um but they fail and so they um find this magical object during said heist um that kind of forces them to go on a quest the plot is not like it's not anything that you haven't seen before um if you've read some YA fantasy it, the plot is not that surprising but the changeling um, sister is autistic, which there was a little, um, 
note from the author at the front um, that said that like changelings have historically um, like the, the reality behind the myth of the changeling is like neurodivergent children who um, didn't understand like a lot of social norms and so they thought okay they must be like not human um, and that's how like the myth of changelings um, became a thing and so um, like it really goes with that idea and so we see the story from the perspective of the changeling um, and so yeah we we get this lens that we don't often get in um in fantasy i really liked it i i, I recognized some of my own inner monologue in her inner monologue um I, I i recognized some of my own perceptions in in hers and it was really nice because i i've never been able to relate to a main character the way that i've been able to do that with Seely, um which is her name um so yeah i really loved it i love that it exists i love the story it's also um something that i really like um is when like the, the the way that the world building it feels very whimsical and magical and colorful um which is a vibe that i really like um I like a similar vibe in for example like once upon a broken heart like that the way the magic and the world is being portrayed is also in this so i really love that as well um yeah just overall i i really I really love this and I need more people to read it because it's it's so under hyped um so I wish more people read it so there you go go read it um yeah and that brings me to the end of my top 10 books of 2023 if you've read any of these let me know your thoughts and please, please let me know what your favorite book of 2023 was because I'm always looking for recommendations. Um, even though my TBR is so long that if I live 10 lifetimes, I probably wouldn't be able to finish it, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> so I'm always looking for more. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in another one later. Bye.